Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Topic 1, Lesson 3. This is going to be Part 1 of 2. And in this lesson, we're going to be starting to solve linear equations. After this lesson, you need to be able to make connections between variables, terms, coefficients, and simple expressions so that you can kind of work to understand more complicated expressions. And you also need to be able to identify and determine if terms are alike or not. So after this lesson, you'll know you're successful if you can explain how variables, terms, and coefficients, and simple expressions can be helpful for understanding larger expressions. And you'll be successful if you can identify if terms are alike or not. This lesson is a lot of vocabulary. So we're going to start with parts of an expression. So expressions. An expression is a mathematical phrase, and it might have numbers, variables, or operators like adding, subtracting, multiply, divide, square root. Uh, there's a lot of other ones, okay? But there is no equal sign. A variable is a letter or symbol that represents an unknown value. And expressions, as I said, do not contain equal signs. Okay? You cannot solve an expression. However, you can simplify by combining like terms. So now let's talk about two other words, terms and coefficients. So terms are parts of an expression that are separated by a plus and a minus sign. The coefficient is the value in front of a variable in a term. If there is no coefficient, and I put no in quotation marks because there actually is one, the value is 1. So if there's not a number in front of the variable, it's actually a 1. And then any term without a variable is called a constant. Let's look at identifying parts of expressions so we can kind of put a visual to these four words that we just learned. Okay, so our first word is terms. Remember, terms were separated by a plus or a minus. So here I have a minus and here I have a plus. My three terms are separated. Now, I had 5x and then a minus. So the 5x was one term. Then I had 17 and then a plus. Okay, and then I have 11y. So my three terms, 5x, 17, and 11y. Now, notice in the middle, the 17 still carries that minus sign. So subtraction is the same as a negative. So if you have a minus, it sticks to the number. So in this case, it'd be minus 17. Okay, we don't need the plus sign for any of the positive terms. In this same expression, we have two variables, an x and a y. So the 5x had the x variable, the 11y had the y variable, the 17 doesn't have a variable. Our coefficients are our numbers that are in front of the variables. So 5 was in front of the x, that's the coefficient. 5 is the coefficient of x, and 11 was in front of the y, so 11 is the coefficient of y. Okay, 17 again, our negative 17, didn't have a variable, so it doesn't count as a coefficient. However, it does count as a constant. Because remember, a constant is a number without a variable. Pause the video and see if you can identify the terms, variables, coefficients, and constants in this expression. Now that you've had a chance, let's look at what fits into each of the four categories. So your terms were what's separated by plus or minus. So I have negative 2.5y 
negative 8, positive z, so again we don't need to put the plus, and negative 9x. In this expression, your variables are x, y, and z, or you might have wrote y, z, and x. Your coefficients are the numbers in front of those. So negative 2.5 was the coefficient of y. 1 is the coefficient of z. Remember, if there is no coefficient, it's a 1. And then negative 9 is our coefficient of x. And then in this expression, we have one constant, and it is negative 8. Now let's look at like terms. They are going to be very important for us when we're simplifying expressions and then moving into solving equations. So we need to decide if terms are like or unalike, so not alike. Okay. Now, in order for terms to be like terms, they need to have the same variable, and that variable has to be to the same exponent. In this first row, we have negative 3c and 5c squared. Those are not like terms because they have the same variable, which is what we want, but it's not the same exponent. Okay, if they were both c to the second powers, we'd be fine. If they were both just c, we'd be fine. But it has to be the same variable and the same exponent. Let's look at the next one. We have 14 and 20. These are like terms, okay? They are both constants. They have the same variable, or lack of, and they don't have an exponent. They are like terms. In the third row, we have 8.5x and 8.5y. Are they like or not? These are not like terms. Okay. They might have the same coefficient of 8.5, but that's not what's important. We need to have the same variable and the same exponent. X and Y are not the same variable. They are not like terms. And then last one, we have 100P and negative P. These are like terms. They have the same variable and the same exponent. Okay. That negative sign is just a negative 1. So the coefficients are 100 and negative 1. But the, the variable in the term, p, is the same in both. Now let's look at another vocab word. We have equations. So equations are different than expressions because they have an equal sign. Okay? It shows that two expressions are equivalent or equal. Okay? So we have an expression on one side of the equal sign and an expression on the other. Those two things are equal. When we're solving our equations, your goal is going to be to isolate the variable. And we need to do this by using inverse or opposite operations, all while keeping both sides equivalent. Okay? So they're equal to begin with, and as we move through it, they still have to be equal the entire time. And that's the first part of this lesson here. Do you know how to identify terms, coefficients, variables, and constants in an expression? And then use those kind of to build larger expressions. And then do you know how to decide if terms are alike or not? If you're not sure on these things, Go back to parts of the video and rewatch them to help further deepen your understanding.